stop me? Why is everybody on the internet so mean? Why is everybody so afraid of what they never seen? If I was scrolling through and I saw me flopping around and singing my song, I'd say, damn, they're cute and sing along. If I were a fish and you caught me, you'd say, look at that fish. We're banning gender-affirming healthcare for trans kids, and restricting what bathrooms and lockers they use, and prohibiting discussions of gender identity and sexual orientation in schools, and allowing teachers to use students' birth names and pronouns against their wishes. We're opposing this. Us too. Same here. I'm vetoing this. We're overriding your veto. So this is a law now. Hey everyone, this guy tells the news and then makes jokes. He's about to deliver a punchline. I'm not doing that today. This is Henry Berg Brousseau. He was a 24-year-old spokesperson for an LGBTQ civil rights organization and a trans man. He was also a Kentucky state senator's son. Was? He died by suicide. The last time he spoke to his mother, he talked about how scared he was of a flood of anti-trans legislation. We're worried that this law will only worsen the harassment and hostile environment our kids are already facing. Polling shows that suicidal thoughts are way more common among trans adults than cis adults, especially those who come out when they're kids. The Trans Lifeline and The Trevor Project both offer support for queer and trans people facing mental health crises. So last week, Marvel released individual posters for each of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, let me know if you can see the problem. We'll start with the men, each of whom is standing, doing something, often attempting to engage with us directly as Kraglin is here, reaching toward us. Groot doing the same, but actively returning our gaze in a very friendly way. Drax is also returning our gaze, but very aggressively, threateningly. Rocket also looks like he's ready to pick a fight. Quill seems less attentive to our presence, but uh, something has caught his attention. If not concerned about something, he certainly looks thoughtful. And then there are the women's posters. Mantis is totally unaware of our presence. Her expression is blank. Nebula is scowling at least, but also positioned passively, also just sitting doing nothing. And all the same goes for Gamora too. It's almost like they made a series of posters that could sit beside the definition of male gaze in a dictionary. Who originally said that I stole? Um, Who made the assumption? Why? I don't know. You looked at me, you made an assumption that I stole. I don't think it's racial profiling. It's, 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 what is it? So tell me, I need to know. Because that's wait, disrespectful. So it's it's disrespectful, here, so. it's wrong. And if you're not sure, why would you say something like that? That's embarrassing. Well, it is you're embarrassing. You're coming up to me while I'm on the phone with my mom and telling me that I stole. Right. That's disrespectful and it's wrong. It's racial profiling. So, I don't know if well, you've Googled well, it or you know, but my, that's what no, it is. I, I do know. That's I, wrong. It's but that's wrong. That's not what my I wouldn't, intent was. If you whatsoever. didn't know for sure, you can't pull me out no footage. You can't do anything. You're looking at me and saying, You've been here, you stole, I need you to leave. That's disrespectful and embarrassing. Embarrassing to me. Right. It's right. not right. So, I, I, first and last name. So So if I'm honest, I think I'm beginning to question how much I want this Overloaded cereal stressor, I'm sitting nauseous Panic on a loop in my head, I'm chronically cautious How can I get off this? If summer doesn't come fast enough, I'm gonna be as pale as Mary Hold your wrist up to mine What? How is that racist? It's obviously a joke, Martina. Martian, you're always complaining to that European American boy at the front desk that you're too pale. I hear you say that all the time. Yeah, Martin, if anyone is racist here, it's you. If I was to go to some European village, I would be the minority and they would be curious about my skin too. It makes sense we would wanna look American because this is America. I went to an all European American high school in the outer city and they were really mean to me. So it goes both ways, Magnet. Manila, it looks like she's about to cry. You should apologize. The other day I told my kid to set a 10 minute timer on her tablet and when it went off, it would be her sister's turn. 15 minutes later, I go to check in and she is still on the iPad. I was like, bro, what the heck? She said, I just wanted to finish what I was doing and then I forgot the timer went off. I said, did you communicate that to anyone? And she said, no. And then I asked, but did you tell your sister you were gonna give it to her and then you didn't? And she said, yeah. I said, hmm, that wasn't a decision made with integrity. And she's like, that's not what integrity is. I said, okay, what is integrity then? And she said, doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do even when no one is watching. 
watching. And I said, yeah, and do you think following through with what you were told to do and what you said you were gonna do is the right thing? And she went, oh, and I said, yeah. And how do you feel when I say I'm gonna do a craft with you or play a game and then I get busy or forget? And she said, not good. I said, yeah, I make that mistake too sometimes, but I'm working at doing better and I know that you can too. I asked, what do you think you should do now? And she brought her sister the tablet and apologized. The moral of the story is that sometimes kids make poor decisions without realizing the impact they'll have, but they are capable of learning. Okay, bye. Um, life is good though. I want y'all to see that life is great. Um. I think wires get crossed a lot here. I don't think that it's mo most black people. I don't believe that they dislike doing outdoorsy things like bike riding or hiking, things like that. I think the common denominator here is that most black folks do not like doing those things. Number one, because they're being invited to do it with white folks or number two there's a whole bunch of white folks in the vicinity and white folks can never just do the fun activity there always has to be some extra goofy shit added in oh you see that dark cave over there why don't we go check it out did you hear that sound let's go investigate no the voice clearly said, get out, Janet. Why can't we just go home? Why can't we just go home? Why do we have to investigate? A lot of you have been wondering where my piercings have gone, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. Normally when I sit down and talk to y'all about things in my life, I like to sit down and do my makeup. But today I'm feeling lazy, so in order to keep your neurodivergent mind on track while we deal with an ADHD medication shortage, here we go. Am I the asshole? M to F29. In all seriousness, the reason that I've taken out my piercings, I don't know if I should get rid of this, but I kinda, I'm kind of enjoying it, so we're gonna keep it. The reason that I've taken out my facial piercings is because I have my FFS coming up. When you get a major reconstructive surgery on your face, they have you take out all your piercings. So over the next few weeks, I will be taking out all of my piercings. I've also decided that when I get FFS, I'm gonna close my stretched ears. I've had them since I was 13 years old, which is over half of my lifetime, and I'm not looking forward to getting rid of them, but my lobes are really thin because I stretched poorly. So rather than having to worry about my earlobes ripping in the future, I'm just gonna get them closed. If you're wondering if I'm planning on re or stretching my ears after everything has healed up. As far as I know, reconstructed lobes shouldn't be stretched again, so the days of me having stretched ears are coming to an end. And as for facial piercings, I'm gonna enjoy my new face before I commit to having any piercings again. What is the policy of the Black Panther Party? Because a lot of people don't know policy. Maybe you might be talking well, maybe about the wrong philosophy. Word, you know? Philosophy, well, is, philosophy is basically what we call intercommunalism. We're yeah. not nationalists. Right. We don't believe in uh, nationalism. Nationalism. Our nationhood, you know, always hooked up, is yeah. akin to superiority, is akin to racism, is akin to That's sectarianism. That's what I said in my song. So we're Imagine not no that, countries. so we understand the world to be a form of dispersed communities. Yeah. You know? And the technology and travel and communications nowadays interconnects the communities of the world, peoples of the world, is everywhere. Really. This is very important, you see. Yeah. So understanding this, then we have an understanding of the economics of intercommunalism, which is based on redistribution of the wealth, and that's where you see the programs, the survival programs, becoming uh, uh, significant, and redistributing the basic wealth to the poor and oppressed people of the world. You know, three quarters of the world is poor and oppressed. Yeah. But we practice it in the black community so the rest of the world can learn. Yeah. So people stop getting united behind skin color and all that other stuff. They yeah. get the poor press people get, get united poor around poor, basic right? programs that serves their basic interests so they won't have to be poor and they won't have to be subjected to hunger like there's 20 million people in this country and this is congressional report i'm talking about hungry and starving that's right and it's the I most wealthiest uh, technological society in the world right. but the main thing is this here you don't only defend yourselves with guns you defend yourselves also with these basic programs because violence is also manifested in hunger is it not yeah, yeah. violence yeah. is also manifested violence. in rats and roaches and dilapidated living conditions, right? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm talking about? That's a form of violence that comes from the whole system. So you have to teach the people to go into the concrete root of the problem.
There's been a lot in the media recently about drag and what's appropriate in front of children. And I get it. Some of my material isn't exactly child friendly. But when you get right down to it, who would you rather have holding your child? A drag queen or a priest? Because the worst thing a drag queen's gonna put on a kid's face is glitter. I ain't got nine lives, I got 39 lashes. I ride this way until it all comes crashing down on me. Oh, it's coming down on me. And drag is everywhere these days. You could almost say it's a bigger business than religion. The only difference is drag queens pay taxes, churches pay hush money. Nailed it. Other than that, we should stop admitting people to college which they can't get into based on the color of their skin. And that's mostly, and that's mostly due to the, the fact that the highest, the highest dropout rates in places like Harvard or other elite universities tend to come from marginalized people because they cannot handle the curriculum because they came from a bad school district. And I, and this has nothing to do with their intelligence. This has to do with the time is up. That people, people, people should finish this statement. Your time is up. Thank you for choice. People should be going in. Like, I should not be going your to Harvard. Your over, please. Your time is up. Okay. Yeah. Number one, he's lying. When you look up the graduation rate for African Americans at the top universities in this country, you'll see this little list right here. Harvard is number two, and you see the African Americans have a 96% graduation rate. I could just stop right there, but I'll keep on going. Number two, most African Americans that go to Ivy League schools like Harvard come from affluent middle class backgrounds. So assuming that they just came from bad schools because they black, it's racist. Number three, making false statements with confidence does not make it true. Number four, do y'all know that it's actually not the elite schools that black people have high dropout rates in, right? It's actually the public universities. Number five, this video is very telling because allegedly this gentleman was told to respond to the question of how can we make college more accessible for marginalized community and he gave the response for why we shouldn't let them in at all, not making it more accessible. Number six, affirmative action benefited white women more than it benefited black people. Can we stop with these facetious assumptions? Number seven, when you look at public school rates and you see that black people are more likely to drop out, then we start thinking about resources and the environments they come from. Because number eight, if I come from a predominantly black community and my history is an elective and your history is the court class, don't you think that's gonna impact the way in which I'm able to graduate? Number nine, just because he doesn't feel qualified to get into Harvard doesn't mean I don't. My last point, the amount of internalized black inferiority in the comments section made me feel ugh, icky. Take a moment to think of just flexibility, love, and trust. Take a moment to think of just flexibility, love, and trust. Here comes a thought. That might alarm you What someone say And how it harmed you Something you did That felt to be charming Things that you say Are suddenly swarming And oh, you're losing sight You're losing touch All these little things Seem to matter so To take a moment and find yourself Take a moment to ask yourself If this is how we fall apart But it's not, but it's not, but it's not, but it's not, but it's not It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay You've got nothing, got nothing, got nothing, got nothing to fear
hello everyone hi so uh, how was everyone's black history month triggering yeah you oh. said it do you want to share with everyone what was so difficult it's just i get they need a month that's fine but the rest of us we walk around on eggshells you know god forbid you disagree with a black person it's did you just call me yeah. and oh, oh my gosh no not out loud but I can't control my intrusive thoughts. Shit, I'll say it out loud. <gasps> Gretchen. Oh my god, no. <laughs> we are trying with Gretchen. Um, I'm not even sure why she shows up. I'm pretty sure it's just to get her hours, but while she's here, we're trying our best. I'm here to keep my spot at my senior living facility. Uh, all I did was ask why my nurse wasn't using the colors restroom. Now everyone thinks I'm senile and confused about what time period I'm in, and maybe I am, you know. I am a little old lady after all. Do you know what year it is, Gretchen? 2023. <laughs> I'm racist, not senile. Yeah, you know, I hear you, Sarah. They like to think that we only deal with privilege, but what about the constant worries and fears of being accidentally racist? Exactly, as if I can control when that happens. Additionally, it's currently White History Month, I mean, mm -hmm. um, Women's History Month, and I don't see any of those people talking about it. Right? Yep. Imagine I accuse them of being racist towards white women. Yes. Why, why History Month? You had it right the first time. Ugh. Hold on, Gretchen, you, you, you might be onto something. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, they say that we lack empathy, right, because we can't relate, and Ew. they're right, you know, we can't experience racism, but uh, we can try. Gross. For homework this week, I want everyone to imagine that there's a white history month. What? Mm -hmm. ah. Imagine only one month where everything is about us. This is <laughs> This is my nation. Nation. 13th reason. I, know I can't. I, know. I can't. <laughs> I know it's a little nightmare. <laughs> but facing one's fear is integral to growth. And I believe in all of you. Great session, everybody. <laughs> Racist rehab is all right. I just don't understand how this is supposed to help us. Imagining oppression. Imagining. It's like Amanda forgets we're women. <laughs> Sojourney Truth once said, aren't I a woman? And I just don't think Sojourney would want this type of division. <laughs> Fuck this. Racist Rehab. Below and pick it up just like this. Yeah. I'm a male. I'm a man. I'm a he. I don't get into that mentally ill stuff. What? Black people enjoyed being slaves. Let's unpack that statement. Contrary to what it claims, enslaved people weren't walking around plantations with big smiles on their faces singing kumbaya with their paternalistic masters. Slavery, by definition, is the ownership of a person as property, and the act of enslaving someone is to force them to remain in a bad situation and or completely control their life. So it's not hard to see how black people, who are in fact human beings, generally didn't like being enslaved. Being enslaved meant being considered as property, like furniture or farm animals. Being enslaved meant watching your family get torn apart and separately sold, not knowing if you'd ever see them again. Being enslaved meant being beaten, sexually assaulted, or killed without repercussions because, as I just mentioned, they were property. In fact, some enslaved people were beaten so badly that they had to repair the holes in their backs with grease, and that's coming from Harriet Smith, a formerly enslaved woman. As for the good old slave owners, well, that's just an oxymoron isn't it? Because the fact remains that they were still slave owners. They still owned people. They still did not accept black people as people, as their equals. <laughs> black people enjoyed being slaves. What's enjoyable about being in your village when one day someone with a skin tone you've never seen before, talking a language you don't understand, bursts through, kidnaps you and your family, forcefully pushes you onto a crowded, unsanitary ship across the Atlantic Ocean to build their country for free under brutal conditions? Because that's what happened to the first generation of enslaved Africans. As for the generations after them, they were forced into a lifetime of servitude. They want you to cut all night long out in the yeah, you cut. And if they want you to hang all night long, you hang. You hang your back. It didn't matter about your tired being tired. You're afraid to say you're tired. 
<laughs> Black people enjoyed being slaves. Never mind the fact that many enslaved people resisted in their own ways, for example, by breaking or hiding tools, working slowly, hiding escape maps in their hair, which is how we got cornrows, or concealing fight moves through dance, which is how we got capoeira. If they were so happy with their treatment, wouldn't they just lay back and let it happen? No, because the majority of Black people didn't enjoy being slaves, and white people knew this. That's why after Nat Turner's rebellion, frightened white mobs killed another 200 black people in retaliation. That's why the state of Virginia passed stronger laws to control slaves. That's why the Underground Railroad, a group of both black and white folks who secretly helped slaves escape to the North, began. Mm. Black people enjoyed being slaves. That statement hinges on the myths of the Uncle Tom and Mammy trope, something I've literally talked about before, to justify the supposed humanity of the institution of slavery. Essentially, enslavers made up that myth because they depended on the institution of slavery and needed it to supply future slaves. And sadly, because slavery has been so frequently misrepresented and whitewashed, we get instances like these. But a lot of black people enjoyed being slaves because of course when you're when you're really? brought up doing something like being a slave your whole life it's all you know i'm sure a lot of slaves probably enjoyed it and were happy because that's the only lifestyle they were aware of <laughs> Did you hear about the representatives who we kicked out of the state legislature? All three? Actually, just two. The black ones? Yes. Yeah. But race has nothing to do with it, actually. But yes. Good. Okay. So you're thinking sparing the lady will make you look sympathetic? Yes. Thank you. Exactly. That, that is exactly how we thought that it was going to be perceived. But she called us racist, which is crazy because as I already said, race has nothing to do with this. That's so ungrateful. Honestly, yes. She's being so ungrateful. Well, at least you got rid of two of them. No. What? Their local officials sent them just sort of immediately right back, which makes sense um, in hindsight, right? Because those officials represent the same people who elected the representatives that we were trying to get rid of. So you acted with no plan. That's what I'm hearing. No, we did. We had a plan. I thought that they would do what we said. That usually works. Are they at least, you know, embarrassed and quiet now? Kind of. Yeah. Um, it's, it was actually less that they're embarrassed and more that they now have large national platforms. Okay. I'm not, I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. Me too. Yeah. Also, disappointed in myself um and you should know that it turns out that our speaker probably definitely most likely definitely doesn't live in the district that he represents well uh as long as he's paying taxes there that should be easy to massage yes he might be paying taxes he may you know we're looking into the taxes um thing and also no big deal but there's a rumor going around uh about a story is mostly accurate that one of our guys peed in another one of our guys' chairs but that was a while ago don't worry about that that's just locker room stuff people will get that wow that's awesome that's awesome that's awesome I exist in the same social media sphere as Talia and, and the Jura Wallows of the world. But the big difference is that I almost never receive any sort of threats. Back in 2014, height of Gamergate, that reactionary misogynist movement against women and their participation in the video game industry, my brother and I went to a convention wearing t-shirts in support of Anita Sarkeesian, one of the women who's at the center of this. I posted them online and the backlash was immediate. And yes, threats were made, but not against us. Instead, the threats were directed at my daughter, my five-year-old who wasn't even there. And in fact, my daughter, who has zero presence except for the times I have mentioned her, has received more threats online than I have. This is the world we live in, and this is why we have to keep fighting to change it. When you pay your rent, you should include a tip for your landlord. Have landlords gone insane? They sound like money bags from Spyro the Dragon. What do you want a tip for? Figuring out how to get ants in the winter? You want it for longest unchanged smoke detector batteries? How about most water-stained ceilings? What the hell is going on? I'm not even angry, I'm just confused. Well, landlords, we're on call 24-7. No, the maintenance workers you underpay are on call. What do you do? 
You want a tip? Here's one. Get a real job. Shit like this brings the movement down. Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around.